This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and JSA Radio, the voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya. Joining me here today, Mr. Jim Hollis. He's the executive director of FISPA. Jim, thank you for joining us here today at JSA TV. Happy to do it, Jamie. How are you doing today? Great, thanks. So, for our viewers who may not already know, can you tell us the latest and greatest about FISPA? Well, you know, two great things about FISPA this year is this is our 20th year of operating as a nonprofit association serving our members. So, uh, there's not too many associations out there can say they're in their 20th year. Uh, we're also in our 10th year of growth. So uh, a lot of our members want to see new faces because it adds to our knowledge base of expertise that our members share across their the membership. So it's a 10 and 20 thing this year. 10 years of growth and 20 years of being a nonprofit. Well, that's amazing. So tell us a little bit about who are your typical members of FISPA. FISPA, um, its its early, early growth days was um, in the growth of the Internet, every state would have an ISP association. Uh, FISPA originally was the Florida ISP Association. Other large associations for ISPs were in uh, Texas, the TISPA group, and CISPA, the CISPA group, so you kind of get the acronyms that are used for the, uh, for the different associations. But after two or three years of operation, uh, Florida expanded nationally and became the Federation of Internet Service Providers of the Americas. And back in the late 90s, there were thousands, literally 7,000 plus Internet Service Providers in the U.S. And they had a very small market niche. Uh, back in the day, a lot of those ISPs were uh, smart and, and looking that it, it, it would be to their benefit to become a local exchange carrier. And the focus at that time of becoming a CLUC was to be able to sell circuits to themselves as a competitive carrier to reduce their cost of goods to make their ISP more profitable. And that evolution is still with us today. We're what's left of the ISP industry and, uh, and the CLUC industry. And our niches are we work with local and regional providers. These are small telecommunication companies. And typically they grew along the lines of a, uh, the ILEC um, LATA. So if you were able to resell services from the local carrier in your area to deliver your own services, that typically came to you in a, in a LATA-based scenario. Some of them be multiple LATA base. And LATA, LATAs to you and I are like our area code, 704 for Charlotte, uh, 980 now for Charlotte. So we're local and regional. Um, if you're multi-state or have the whole state or national, those are larger type uh, of Internet providers and CLEX. They tend to belong to uh, the larger association called Encompass.org. Uh, our market niche are the independently owned and operated local and or regional internet service providers and competitive local exchange carriers. That's our market niche. And so what are the benefits that you provide to your members? Well, the first thing that our members are going to say, um, I hear a lot of, I didn't know there were companies like me out there. Um, I thought I was alone is, is another one. It's so nice to know that I'm not the only one out there having the same problems. So my job as executive director is I report to a great group of volunteer of a board of directors is to enable our members to collaborate and uh, share their knowledge base. And believe it or not, the, the best way to do that right now is, is our members actually like this is a good old fashioned email list serve. It's, a, it's an ability for hundreds of people, hundreds of companies to post issues, questions uh, that are driving their businesses that they want responses to. And usually they're fast responses and they're, they're very varied. Uh, the owner operators of these companies are on that listserv. It's an, it's an employee base. You can have multiple employees from the same company on that, on that listserv. And it ranges anywhere from my office lady just quit. Uh, I need a new uh, compensation plan, a new job description to I'm on a customer site, I'm trying to bond two T1s together 
Does anybody have a configuration for a Cisco 2601? Um, so a lot of business questions, a lot of technical questions, and it's not overwhelming. Um, one of the things that these uh, owner operators don't want, it's not a social media platform. This is something where we allow collaboration and knowledge base. And that's a searchable uh, listserv, email listserv. So if you're looking for old topics, uh, you can collaborate on there. The second largest benefit that our members drive me to, besides making sure that we have collaborative ways of our members coming together, uh, by the way, that would include a portal uh, besides email for collaboration as well, our vendor solutions. Um, a smaller company doesn't necessarily have the time to shop and put out an RFP and evaluate RFPs and do technical analysis and bring equipment into labs and test the labs. But when they put out a, a question for, I'm looking at this vendor, or what vendors have you considered, the knowledge that comes forward on vendor selection is huge. And a lot of these vendors are members of FISPA. Um, if you're a good vendor, uh, it's always hard to get your product out there, it seems like. But if you're a bad member, it's very easy to find out when you're a bad vendor. So uh, an association like FISPA tends to flush out the lesser vendors rather quickly. And the larger vendors that participate in FISPA and take the time to get to know our membership participate on that email list service when appropriate, uh, attend our meetings, which I'm coming to our meeting platform as well as another value add of FISPA. So you had vendor solutions and bringing vendor solutions to our members is a, is a great benefit of FISPA. And then the third one that seems very important is we have meetings. Uh, we have an annual meeting. Uh, we get about 60% of all of our members to participate. Um, they enjoy it. They've known these guys, this industry group for a long time and it's educational focused. Uh, one of the differences of FISPA compared to a lot of other trade shows that kind of uh, nibble around the edges of this telecommunications industry are, um, you know, you go to a trade show and everybody wants to try to find out ways of delivering content over an IP-based uh, internet system. And you'll find a company that's a keynote speaker or a panelist on a speaker panel and he'll talk about how he's delivering 2020 channels. And of course, somebody in one of the audience will say, hey, how'd you do that? And the answer typically is, well, I, you know, I can't tell you that. I'm under non-disclosure, or uh, let me get back to you. And th it's good to know that, that companies are able to start um, getting content that they can put out on an IP network. But what FISP is about is, you know, we want to know how to. We want to know exactly how you did it. Did you go to the NCTC? Did you get a contract? Are you part of a buying group? What's the name of the person you worked with? Was there a deposit required? How big is the legal agreement? What are your restrictions? And when you go to a FISPA meeting or in our listserv, we're all about the how-to. And that's another huge value add. And that how-to um, also, you know, besides adding to our knowledge base, it really reduces or even eliminates the need for a lot of high-end consultancy fees that you might pay otherwise. So for our modest membership dues, you're getting a lot of uh, free consulting, I'll say. Yeah, you've got free consulting, you've got um, that, that vetting of those vendors, that, uh, that information sharing, that collaboration, and those events that are, again, empowering more education, mm -hmm. correct information um, out to the marketplace. Right. So loving the FISPA model, been a fan of it for years and of you, Jim, for years. So uh, you. we appreciate you spending some time. One last question for you. Um, I know it's just such an evolving marketplace, as you discussed. Where do you see FISPA heading in a year or two out? Well, um, I'm going to answer it in two parts. Uh, the first part kind of takes us back to our engagement with vendors. Um, an internet service provider couldn't have existed back in 1994, 95, 96, as they started out as dial-up providers because somebody had to provide the dial tone. So very early, our industry learned that uh, I need access to the incumbent local carrier's network to be able to provide my services. And I think everybody remembers the, the screeching modem, you know, yell that came from the local carrier. You may have been dealing with, you know, Jim's internet service or Billy Bob's internet service, but it was running on one of the incumbent local carriers. Uh, early in that process, uh, besides bringing vendors to the table, uh, FISPA also engages the ILEX and the cable codes. 
And a lot of times we're told, you know, we're crazy to do that, but we're not crazy. Uh, when you have a group of uh, young telecommunication companies that are very early to adopt new technologies, they need that last mile access to deliver their services, and they do things better. They're either quicker to deploy, they're cheaper to deploy, and then there's the infamous, they just simply answer their telephones, which is sometimes a huge advantage to anybody that, that wants help when they have a problem with their internet. But in the last uh, 10 years, we've seen a huge boom in our buying programs, primarily with AT&T and their fiber network. Uh, they have Metro Ethernet is a product name. They have OptiMan, OptiWAN, and most recently AT&T switched Ethernet. And we see that, that growth in fiber connections. 80% uh, of the invoices that go out of FISPA are business. So we're primarily a business to business. We do have some members that do a great job of doing consumer. So uh, over the years, the last couple of years particularly, um, many of our members have, have started to deploy their own fiber network. This is where they're doing layer one, owning their own fiber. They're trenching. They're, uh, they're, they're digging holes. They're pulling fiber. They're putting in conduit. Uh, some of it's on telephone poles or power poles. A lot, most of it's under the ground. Right now, what we see is a, a continued need in the U.S. for growth of fiber. Uh, the wireless technologies are doing great. Um, 5G is on the horizon, and that's going to solve a lot of connectivity last mile issues. But you're always going to need fiber between those connections. So last time we did a little little audit, we had 43 members that had deployed fiber networks or are in the process of deploying fiber networks or actually have committed projects. So I expect that to be 60 probably during in the next 12 months. That's a 50% growth. So the answer to your question is really it's fiber. And right on. Uh, we're seeing it the same uh, exceeding growth uh, on our end. And, uh, um, yeah, I uh, couldn't agree with you more, Jim. Well, thank you so much for your time. And for our viewers who want to know more, where can they go? Well, um, FISPA, F-I-S-P-A, which really that is our name right now. There is no uh, acronym to go with that. It's just FISPA.org is our, is our website. Our meeting website is FISPALive.com. And the value of looking at our meeting website um, is you get, the, you get a feel for the topics into discussion points that are industry. So if you go to FISPALive.com and go to the agenda, that is the most recent topics that, that are hot. You know, I, my job as executive director is to respond to the discussion threads on our email list or the phone calls that I get. And uh, I try to accumulate all that into our last meeting. So FISPO.org. And uh, there's also a pin map, pin map on there. You can go to where we are. It'll show you everybody by our state. It'll show you a, a kind of a, a pin map representation of our membership. We are national. And then FISPALive.com to kind of get a feel for our meetings. And uh, I will add that as a nonprofit association, we put all the money right back into our members. So uh, there's nobody getting fat in all these programs, uh, except for me, I guess. But uh, that's where you can find us. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to, uh, to work with you, Jamie, and uh, great job so far. Well, thank you, Jim. It's an honor to have us here today and to learn more about uh, all the great this is doing for us. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Radio.